This is an introduction to basic navigation in Flywire. On the left, you see electron microscope images, the 2D view, and on the right, you see a 3D view of the segments that I've highlighted in blue and yellow. The spacebar toggles between views. For example, you can look at only the 3D view if you want. Um, and the corner buttons also toggle between views. So this is going to take me right now to the four panel layout which shows an XY view, a y, uh, sorry, an XZ layout, and a YZ layout, and the 3D again. And this button will take you back to the original XY 3D layout. To move between EM slices, use the mouse wheel or keystrokes, the comma key and the period key. If you use control with the mouse wheel, it zooms in either window. If you click and drag in the EM view, this pans. If you click and drag in the 3D view, this rotates. If you shift drag in the 3D view, this will pan. But shift drag shouldn't be done in the 2D view because it spins the whole brain stack around um, and creates strange artifacts. So what you want to do is shift drag back until the red axis is pointing to the right, the green axis is pointing down. And when you're close enough, for example, like this, you can hit Z to snap to the nearest axes. Z also works in this window. The front of the brain in this data set, uh, you're looking at it from the front. If the red axis is pointing to the right, the green is down and the blue is pointing back into the screen. And again, Z snaps to an axis. So if you wanted to view it from the side, you could go to here and hit Z. You can left click to hide a tab or click on the number that's located beside it. So if I hit number two on my keyboard, that would hide this tab. Pressing this X will delete a tab, which if that happens by accident, you can undo it with this button at the bottom. This EM dataset was collected at Genelia at a voxel resolution of four by four by 40 nanometers. That's shown up here. Next to it are the XYZ coordinates of your, where your crosshairs are located. These coordinates can be copied using this button, and you can also manually edit them or paste into this field. If you want to save your work, coordinates are a very useful way of doing it. Uh, you can right-click on something that you're working on. Let's say I was working on this blue neuron. I right-click to center it and then right click to make sure the crosshairs are really within it. And then I could copy these coordinates and use a spreadsheet to keep track of the work that I'm doing. So I might have a name for this neuron. Um, I might want to say that I've completely finished perforating it and using these coordinates are a good archival way of uh, saving which neuron you were talking about. And that is because the neuron's number over here, it called its segment ID, is not archival. It, this number is actually just a snapshot in time. So it changes with every edit to the neuron. So you can save this number in a spreadsheet that you're working in, but whenever any edits are made to that neuron, this number will change. So Coordinates are the best way to save the most updated view of a neuron. If I double click on it, it deselects that segment and double clicking it brings it back up. And the one that it brings up is the most current version. Note that double clicking on a neuron actually deletes it from the list. You can see that the blue segment is gone here. So before deselecting it and reselecting it, it's good practice to have right clicked within the neuron so you don't lose track of where you were. You can also delete it by clicking on its number here. So if you only want to hide it, don't click this, use this check mark next to it to hide it. 
Besides copying coordinates into a spreadsheet to save your work, we also recommend using this share button. This generates a link that you can share with colleagues or paste into your spreadsheet to keep track of all of the work that you've been doing. All you have to do is click once in here and it'll be copied to your clipboard. When you click outside of this, it removes that box and you can paste the link into your spreadsheet. The other advantage of doing this is that it saves your whole view or state. It saves which segments you had turned on, it saves the exact zoom level and rotation, and it this share button also has the advantage of posting this state to the local memory so that if your browser crashes, then your state can be reloaded. There's also a shortcut that duplicates the function of this share button, which is Control Shift J. I should mention that uh, if something is slow to load or for other reasons, you may want to refresh the view. So hitting F5 on a Windows machine will reload the page without losing the view that you were looking at. Up here, the gear icon shows preferences, and if you're having display problems, you can try increasing or decreasing the two memory limits. Hit escape to get out of that. The question mark icon shows uh, quick keys for lots of different functions that you can do within the GUI. The exclamation mark shows what's new and can act a bit like a manual uh, if you scroll back through previous posts. And the ladybug icon allows you to provide feedback. The menus on the right are specific to particular tabs. So if I right click on the image tab, you'll see a different menu than you would if I right click on the segmentation tab. We only really need to cover the menu for the segmentation tab right now. Some of the things that it can do are change the opacity of the 2D neuron. So if you look here, you can see that opacity changing. It can also change the opacity of the 3D neuron, which can be useful for various things. Down here, I mentioned deleting segments by clicking on them. You can also copy this segment ID, and you can also paste segment IDs in this window and hit enter to bring them up. You can change the color of a segment here This check mark allows you to hide or reveal all segments. This allows you to copy all visible segment IDs. So if this were hidden, then this button would only copy the pink one. This allows you to copy all segment IDs, and this allows you to delete all segment IDs. There's a bit of a bug in this button that it should turn green and let you know that you've su successfully copied this segment ID. If it fails to turn green, then it isn't actually copying it. And there's a little workaround that if you just click once in this box, then this should start to work again. I'll talk more in another video about how to use annotations and how to edit neurons by splitting and merging.